Hi, friends. Hope everybody's doing well. We're online. I'm just still waiting to get so I can get into this, right? So I can see who's here when they comment. I can't tell who's here unless you comment. Should be here momentarily. There it is. Hope everybody's okay. One more. Bring that up. Kip Horvath. There you are. You got in first again. You were first for so, so, so many days, weeks, months, right? Then had some other folks. So, hi, Kip. Kevin and Chris Vaughn, good morning. Hi, Carrie. Carrie's there as Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Judy Hatch, good morning. Hi, Ken Woods. Happy Tuesday to you. It is a Tuesday. I don't want that. Larry and Carolyn Thomas, good morning. Hi, Robin Allen. Hope everybody's doing okay. Something's wrong with that. Caro, we're going to call you Caro from now on. It's hard to type in the morning. Hi, Sandy Sauerbeck. How are you? Good to see you. Supposedly, we have four devices online. I don't believe that because there's more than you that are commenting. So we'll have to see. I think that counter runs a little bit behind. So, Barbara Wolf, good morning. Judy Martin, good morning. Good to see you all. We're coming up here. It's Tuesday, July 26. God's given us another wonderful day here in southeast Michigan. Coolness last night, actually down into the below 60. That was great. And uh, a little rain coming. A little rain coming tomorrow, I think. So, so good to be here with you guys, folks. Linda Clark, good morning. Barbara Wolf, good morning. And uh, as we get going here, it's just about 9 o'clock. We'll give some folks some more time to come in here and say hello. Hope you're all doing well today. I'm here in the office. I have my coffee. And we're waiting. I'm waiting. This is what I'm waiting for. Waiting for 11 o'clock tonight or 11.15, whatever. Mega millions are getting pulled. Hi, Scott Johnson. Hope you're doing well. Mega Millions, and it's up to, uh, I don't know, something ungodly. $810 million, something like that. Almost $500 million. If, you, if, you, if you're the sole winner and take the cash option, it's like $474 million. Oh, the Gradenzak family, we need to pray for. They have a lost dog. We certainly will. Hi, Gene Hardwig. You and Joanne Butters are up there. Good to, good to hear from you guys. See you. Hi, Robin Allen. Robin is coming to Michigan tomorrow. And you would like traveling mercies. Absolutely. No, everybody will be my friend if I win, right? Hi, Barry and Margo. Meg and I had a long discussion during one of our drives about what what would you do if you won that kind of money and what we came to the conclusion was is that anything over 20 million is not needed and when i said now what do you need 20 million dollars for but i mean but my point was if you had 20 million dollars and you just invested it you know very securely so you weren't going to lose any of it you know and you're not going to make a lot of money on it but you got 20 million you know you make one percent you got two hundred thousand dollars a year right there just to spend. So we always said, you know, two hundred million. So, okay, lock in the twenty million, you know, and you and you give the rest away to make to make communities better, help others. So, and uh, so anyway, so <laughs> yeah, if we win, that's our plan, right? Got to have a plan to win. So, hi, Pat McBride. 
Good to see you. And Bob Ando, good morning. All right, we're almost to 9.03. I was so late yesterday because I babbled on because I don't have anybody here with me. So sometimes I just, I just feel like I'm talking to the computer. But we have good discussions, right? So. All right, so the, I'm going to write something down here, if you don't mind. I want to make sure that I get stuff. So we need to pray for the Brad and Zach. Then Robin Allen wants traveling mercy. And uh, little Ava that uh, we pray for, she's going on having some more testing. We're praying that her cancer, you know, is going to be fine. Pray for that. Hi, Amy Bowerman. All right. It is 9.03, so we can get going. And uh, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Now, as far as other news of the church goes, we are, uh, of course, we have Sunday service, right? And remember, not this weekend, but next weekend, Allen Park Street Fair. And on our North Lawn, we will be offering the Oasis yet again so for snacks and uh drinks and um we uh encourage you we need we we only right we only uh we, what we really need is help and so there's a sign up genius for that and uh carrie can put that in there so if people can give us a little bit of help again not this weekend but the first weekend in august uh if you can help with that that would be really great um so that's kind of our news, because it's the summer. Things are slow, right? So Sunday, we hope to see everybody. Um, Meg and I are actually, I'm, I'm in the office until noontime today, and then Meg and I are going to head up to our cottage, so I'll work remotely. Uh, so if you need anything, I'm just a phone call or text or email away. Um, but I'm going to work remotely because I have all-day Zoom meetings on Wednesday and Thursday. Now, they're not Allen Park Church related. Um, they're related to Presbytery work. But uh, rather than sit in my office and do that, we're going to go up. I'm going to do that from up there. So then when we're done, we can do some stuff. And um, so anyway, so that's that's our plan. So I will, you, I will be coming to you from our cottage for daily devotions tomorrow. Lord willing, when the creek don't rise, right? Thursday, since I'm going to be on conf uh, conference calls, Barry and Margot. Barry and Margo are uh, the dynamic duo are going to do that. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Aunt Mary. With your left hand, she's got that, she's got, got a little bit of a problem with her clavicle, right? So, and somebody asked for, Pat McBride is asking for Martha Pod, a fellow Presbyterian woman moderator out of Columbus, Ohio. So we certainly will help. Right. So help. Uh, and then it is a fifth Sunday. So we're collecting the barn banks for our fifth Sunday offering, right? And it goes to the Heifer Project, which is um, what a great way to help people, right? It's people who are in need of food, but not necessarily just food, just um, animals so that they can do it. So, I mean, because you can eat an animal, right? Or else you can use an animal, like a cow will give you milk and continue on. You don't have to just eat, eat it. Sheep will give you wool and all that stuff. All right. Um, so, yeah, so that's most of it with the encouragement is that they continue to keep the animals. Uh, so they have continuing access to food and other things, although sometimes they're used as food, like chickens and eggs and all that stuff. And Pat and Bride's going to be us with us on Sunday. That's wonderful. All right, now it's time. Now, gosh, it's 9.07. Now it's time to go. Oh, good Lord. So our, our uh, I'm going to see now. Now my mind is just filled up with stuff, and i got to empty it. 
So I'm going to do my breathing exercise. I breathe in for five, hold it for five, exhale for five, ask the Holy Spirit into my heart. So as we read God's word, that God will speak clearly to us. Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Opening scripture, Psalm 54. Here we go. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth, for the insolent have risen against me. The ruthless seek my life. They do not set God before them. Selah. But surely God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good, for he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So there's that word, Selah, which is really not supposed to be said, right? It's just to the reader, just to pause. How are we going to know that? So uh, we're moving into our historical. So I told you yesterday we were moving out of Joshua. So we have Moses to Joshua. Joshua's dead. It says that the elders of Israel continued in the ways and uh, they they expelled um, all of the all of the idols and uh, they were uh, faithful to God. Uh, but that was only the elders that were alive when. Joshua was alive, and as they died, bad things happened. So we move into the next book of the Bible, which is Judges. So we're going to hear about Judges. What are Judges? And, uh, when did they come into being? What was their purpose? Find out all that today in Judges chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and then continuing on with 11 through 23. Um, now, uh, uh, let's just put this in uh, map time. We know that um, the nation of Israel came across the Jordan River from east of the Jordan, right? And they came and moved west right around uh, Jericho, right? But they had uh, Gilgal, which is they crossed, and they also had Shechem. Shechem was the center of religious life for the people of Israel. Not Jerusalem. That didn't happen until David's times, for, so for quite a while later. Um, so we're going to hear about some of these other other towns that they had, and these were towns, settlements that were on, if you're looking at down, the Jordan River's coming down, and the Jordan River em empties into the Dead Sea, so maybe 15 miles north of where that happens, but over to the west of the Jordan, that's where, that's where this is in. It's also known as Ephraim, which is also known as Hill Country. Okay, here we go. The word of the Lord for us today. Now the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you into the land that I had promised to your ancestors. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. For your part, do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of this land. Tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my command. See what you have done. So now I say, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall become adversaries to you, and their gods shall be a snare to you. When the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the Israelites, the people lifted up their voices and wept. So they named the place Bochum, which means sadness, and there they sacrificed to the Lord. Then the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and worshipped the Baals, they banded the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed up from among the gods of all the peoples who were all around them and bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They abandoned the Lord and worshipped Baal and the uh, Asterites. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them over to plunderers who plundered them, and he sold them into the power of their enemies all around so that they could do no longer so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them to bring misfortune, as the Lord had warned them and sworn to them, and they were in great distress. So, I'm going to pause here. Selah. Um, 
So the continued story in the Old Testament is people um, coming into the righteousness of God, right, with what they think, do, say, worship, and then away as they intermingled with the other religions that were around him. And this is a constant refrain, you know, in this time of the Old Testament. So we need to remember that. Um, and uh, so here they go. They've been in and out of God's graces right now. They're out of God's graces. So uh, God has let other people begin to plunder them. They're weakened. Um, they, they're, they're, in fra they're afraid of their lives, right? So this is how God responds, because he's doing that because they, they have intermingled and they're worshiping other gods. So here we go. This is what God does. Then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the power of those who plundered them. Yet they did not listen even to their judges, for they lusted after other gods and bowed down to them. They soon turned aside from the way in which their ancestors had walked, who had obeyed the commandments of the Lord. They did not follow their example. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge. And he delivered them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord would be moved to pity by their groaning because of those who persecuted and oppressed them. But whenever the judge died, they would relapse and behave worse than their ancestors, following other gods, worshiping them and bowing down to them. They would not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and and he said, because this people have transgressed my covenant that I commanded their ancestors and have not obeyed my voice, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died in order to test Israel whether or not they should take, take care to walk in the ways of the Lord as their ancestors did. The Lord had left those nations, not driving them out at once, and had not handed them over to Joshua. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So you can see the, the danger. And even in the earliest times with the Ten Commandments, he said, you have, shall have no other gods before me. But people, maybe it's in our nature, right? Just, again, grasp that which could be seen and heard rather than is it ethereal. The, um, um, you know, lest we think this, this is 10,000 years in the past, think about what we might do. What gods do we pick up? Right, that are around us and distract us and call us in, but ultimately pull us away from the purity of God's love. And what would those gods look like? They're not, it's not altars that we go to and worship, but it's other things that we pick up in our lives. And we see this more in the New Testament, right? Like the love of money, right, is one of those things. Um, that's, uh, that's kind of the, uh, the best example, I mean, chemical abuse, uh, substance abuse, those types of things can all stand in the way of God's purity of love and intention for us. Um, just some, sometimes we hold up our relations with other humans as higher than our relationship with God because we want to be loved. We want to be liked, right? So we do things that are in our nature, but we do things so that we might be accepted by other people rather than knowing that we've been so beautifully made with our scars and all by God, right? And that we're supposed to be comfortable in that skin. All right. We'll move into our New Testament and we're going to get, uh, we're finishing up Romans. Yay, right? Right. So this is Romans chapter 16. This is the closing. So we heard about all these people that Paul knows that would uh, that were either in Rome or probably had been in Rome or were on their way to Rome to say, hey, I know all these people. So uh, here he goes. He's closing the letter. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep an eye on those who cause dissensions and offenses. In opposition to the teaching that you have learned, avoid them, for such people do not serve our Lord Christ but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the simple-minded. For while your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I want you to be wise in what is good and uh, guileless in what is evil. The God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
Timothy, my co-worker, greets you. So does Lucius and Jason and Sassipater, my relatives. I, Tertullius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. So here's Paul. He was dictating this letter, right? And as they get to the end, the guy who is taking this says, oh, by the way, I say hi too. <laughs> so here we go. Gaius, who was host to me, and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greets you. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed. And through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. There we go. Amen. Now we're going to move into Matthew. And now this is, um, we're, into, we're into Good Friday at this point. Daylight has broken. Jesus has uh, stood trial and been found guilty, although Pilate says, I don't find anything wrong with him. I wash my hands. And they demanded, no, we want, we want uh, Babarus, uh, 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 Barabbas uh, released and crucify Jesus. Uh, the blood is on your hands. So they turn him over to the Roman guard who does these things, this terrible, terrible crucifixion, and they beat him and they mock him. Now they've got to move from Pilate's, um, uh, from Pilate's courtyard, where they are, uh, and to the place where they're going to do the crucifixion. And they would make the people who were facing it, who had already been beaten, uh, carry the cross beam, the cross. So here they go. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his, Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgatha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But he, when he tasted it, he would not drink it. I'm going to pause right now. So Golgatha, this would have been outside of the city gates. We're not sure exactly. There's, you could actually, when you go to Jerusalem, there's a couple of places. We, um, and we think that this would have been, uh, as I'm looking at Jerusalem, just uh, this would be on the southeast side of Jerusalem, which is on the same side that the temple is on, but to the south of that. And um, um, probably real close to a trash dump, right? And the place of the skull. So, and, and there's been a lot of, well, let's see. If you went to Jerusalem, you could see no less than three places, which um, some denomination or another claim, claims that this is the place where Jesus was crucified. So, but this wine, this gall, that is a painkiller, right? So they're saying, hey, this is going to hurt. Drink this, it'll help it. Jesus wouldn't take it. All right. Continuing on, and when they had crucified him, just remember what crucif crucifixion is, they had driven nails through his hands, right? Actually through his wrist, because if they put it in the hands, it would have torn. And then they also, um, sometimes they would nail through um, the ankles too. Not all the time, but sometimes. So there he is, right? So, um, they crucified him. They divided his clothes among them by casting lots. That's out of Isaiah. That's Isaiah's prophecy said that that would happen. Then they, this is the centurion guard, sat down and kept watch over him. Over his head they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. 
In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. Jesus is all alone. Not only all alone, but being mocked. Even worse, he's being mocked. So we can see that some of this are people who are non-believers. But a very alone time. And, I, and the thing that strikes me about this is that we know that we say that Jesus was fully human, fully God. You say, how does that happen? That's one of the mysteries. But I think that, especially on the cross, we see some very human sides of Jesus. And so we can put ourselves in our human side in there and go, man, there's just nothing there, right? Can you imagine how how uh, just empty? You're hurting terribly, and you're, and you're left all alone, and you're being mocked. All right. Let's go back over here. Very good, Doug. Doug Goddard did well. Thanks be to God. Hi, Paul Wolf. Good morning. Norma Bentley's with us. Hi, Ann Winslow. I don't know who Wando Harrison was. Hi, Joy and Steve Yember. Oh, I see. Okay. There you go. A cow pinata. All right. Bring the kids. Hi, Bob Ando. All right. Here we go. So we need to pray, right? So I've got some folks here. I hope, hope, I hope. Get them off. If not, we're going to have a general prayer. Make sure that we do that. So are we ready to pray? Let's go. Heavenly Lord, we come before you today and we thank you for this time that you've uh, carved out so that we could uh, spend it here with you. And uh, we thank you for the technology that we have so that we have some people that will watch this later, perhaps during a, a pause in their day or to finish their day. Uh, however people receive this, uh, this message, Lord, we thank you for giving it to us. We thank you for the fellowship that you've created amongst us. We ask you to be with us uh, as we walk through this day. Uh, but we especially lift up those who are in extra need of your presence, your comfort, your healing. Uh, Lord, we pray for the Gradenzak family that uh, they've lost a dog. We just ask that, uh, that the community come together and that that dog be returned safely to them. We also want to pray traveling mercies for those who are on the road. Robin Allen will be coming up. We'll be seeing her and spending, and Pat McBride also. Uh, Lord, uh, bless their travels. Um, bless my travels, as uh, Meg and I traveled today. And uh, Lord, we want to pray for Martha, uh, a dedicated servant uh, who is from um, who is from a Presbyterian woman, as she undergoes uh, some treatment uh, for breast cancer. Lord, we pray for health for all, and we want to lift up. We continue to lift up young Ava, uh, who has been brought to our attention through Norma Bentley. Lord. Um, She's, she has uh, uh, had brain cancer and has been under treatment for quite a while. There's been such uh, positive things that have come in the last several months. Lord, we just ask that that would continue and that you would give comfort and grace uh, to her family and strength. Lord, we pray all of this in your name. And uh, we come to you every day because as we heard and uh, as we looked at your scriptures on Sunday, Lord, we've, we know that uh, we need to trust in you, that you will take care of all of our days, and that we would just take each day as they come, and that you would guide us so that we would walk in your ways, that we would do your will. Lord, bless all who we didn't mention by name here, who are in need of continued healing. Uh, many times, uh, Lord, it's the physical part that isn't the hard part, but it's, it's our minds, it's our brains. They, they run on overtime. And we tend to go to the worst possible outcomes. So, Lord, give us hope. Give us hope. And let that healing occur. We do ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, all. God bless. Traveling mercies to all who are on the road today. I will see you guys um, tomorrow. 
right? Uh, same time, same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, as we uh, as we go about our days, may the Lord be with you. God loves you, so do I, so do we all here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. All right. God bless all.